What's up everybody, Caleb Bolton here, your paint coach. Today we're gonna to be talking about exactly what tools and material you need to have a successful, less stressful paint job. Now some of these tools you might already have, some of them you might need to go get, uh, but they're not expensive. Everything you're gonna see here is probably gonna be under 120 bucks. Um, and you're gonna be saving money on labor because you are gonna do this yourself. So we're just gonna dive right down to it. Flathead screwdriver. We're gonna use the flathead screwdriver to take off the face plates around the light switches and the plugs. Now the face plates are those little frame pieces you see that are around light switches and plugs. We're gonna pop those bad boys off, paint behind them, put them back on when we're done. So a flathead screwdriver. You're also gonna want an inch and a half putty knife. Now this is gonna be your best friend. I keep this in my back pocket with me the whole time I'm painting because you're gonna need it to scrape stuff off the walls and you're also gonna need it to use for our spackling paste that we use to fill nail holes and then we're also gonna use it for our putty when we're filling nail holes on baseboards. So inch and a half flexible putty knife. Speaking of spackle, you're gonna wanna get some uh, just lightweight spackling paste and you can get it anywhere and this is gonna be used to fill nail holes on the walls. Nail holes, any other kind of holes that are in the wall, uh, lightweight spackling paste. We're also gonna want a wire brush. Now coach, why the heck would I want a wire brush if we're painting? Well, I'll tell you. This is gonna be used to clean our paint brushes when we're done. Uh, if you use this, and I'll show you in different videos when we talk about actually using the brush, but this wire brush we're gonna use after we spray out our paint brush and it'll keep it brand new and make it last forever. Now, speaking about paint brushes, this is very intimate for me. I love purdy, medium stiff, flat paint brushes. These things are the best. I've used all kinds of different brushes, but the purdies, they're soft, they're smooth, and they go on so nice, and I just love them. I love this little naughty guy. This thing will be the best. Purdy, extra stiff, flat paint brush. You can't never go wrong with a purdy. I love you. Uh, you're also gonna want a duster. This is just a six inch block, bus, uh, block duster. Don't tell my wife, but th she thinks this is nine inches. Six inch uh, block duster. You could also use any kind of old brush, any kind of duster that will be used to uh, dust off baseboards, dust off surfaces before we tape, and also before we paint. Six inch block duster, also a purdy. Uh, let's see here. Hammer. You're going to want a hammer to go around with you because if you have any nails, which you probably will, up on the wall, you want to go around first before you do anything else. Pop off those nails. So hammer, everybody's got one of those. Junk drawer, toolbox, laying around somewhere. We're also going to talk about caulk. That's right, caulk. Uh, this stuff we're going to use to fill any cracks, any crevices along the walls that we're not going to use with our spackle, any cracks that are longer than like a little gash or anything like that, we're gonna use our caulk. We're also gonna want a caulking gun. And I'll show you guys how to use this in my episode, Caulk Talk. <laughs> caulk. Uh, now this is something awesome that I wanna show you guys. This is a uh, two foot to four foot roller pole. Now I know a lot of people will use old uh, broomsticks, old little flimsy handles that you use to uh, screw into your roller frame. You're gonna wanna get a nice roller pole. This thing is sturdy. It'll last forever and it's two foot to four foot. It extends, so this way you can get all the way to the top of the wall, all the way down to the baseboard. It also um, collapses that way when you move the bed or dresser or anything away from the wall. It collapses to be smaller so you can fit behind tight spaces. So a two to four foot roller pole. If you have higher ceilings, they have longer poles. You can get a six to 12, a four to eight. Uh, but just for your basic bedroom, you're gonna want a two to four foot uh, roller pole extension, extension pole. Also, this thing is awesome. Some of you might have seen this, not a lot of people have. It is a sanding pole adapter thingamajiggy. Now this is used to screw onto your roller pole. And once it's on there, we'll put sandpaper here and I'll show you how to do that in, a, in the other prep videos. Sandpaper goes there, you use this to sand the walls. So this is definitely something you want because no one really ever does this that I've seen. And uh, it gets all the boogers off the walls, dust off the walls, any kind of things that pop off, this sands it right off. So roller pole extension, sanding pole thingamajiggy. And that being said, we're gonna want some sandpaper. Now I personally like 120, this right here says 180, uh, but 120 grit is usually your go-to for doing the walls and uh, 
it, you cut it in half, put it on your sand, sanding pole adapter, and I'll show you how to do that in other videos. 120 sandpaper. Uh, you're also going to want 12 inch masking paper. Now this is going to go onto our hand masker. Hand maskers are super cool. Uh, the paper goes here. We're going to get some inch tape, one inch painter's tape that goes here. And I'll show you guys, when we go to cover dressers, if you're painting in the bathroom, this is super quick and easy to tape off the countertops, toilets, whatever. You go like this, pull it off. Tape is already connected to the paper. Boom. You can't beat it. Saves time, saves effort. Super cool contraption. Masking machine. Hand masker. You can get it anywhere. We're also going to want inch and a half painter's tape. Now you want to get the blue tape, frog tape. Uh, the blue tape I found works the best. It comes in all kinds of different brands. Frog tape is great. And this is what we're going to use to tape off our baseboards. It leaves a nice clean line. Inch and a half uh, blue painter's tape. You're also going to want to get a drop cloth. Now this is a four foot by 12 foot drop cloth called a runner. These are awesome because you use it with you as you paint. You just drag it along the ground uh, in front of the wall. And I've seen people use plastic, paper, and, and that stuff doesn't work because it costs money. You gotta throw it away when you're done. It's uh, sticky, it gets all stuck to your feet. Don't do that anymore. Go get a nice four foot by 12 foot drop cloth. Uh, you use it while you're painting. When you're done, you fold it up and it will literally last forever. Also, you want to get a one inch, I'm sorry, a one gallon uh, cut bucket. Now the butt cut it is awesome because this is what we're going to use to pour our paint into after we uh, pour it from the bucket. Because you don't want to paint from a one gallon bucket that's full of paint. We're going to pour up a little bit of paint that we used to brush out of. One gallon cut bucket, I call it a butt cut it, but whatever. Now, how many of you have ever used one of these? This is my absolute pet peeve. If you've ever used one of these little rolling paint trays, I want you to go grab it if you have one. Go get it, grab it, and this is what I want you to do. Because they don't work and they're stupid. I hate those things and I see everybody using them and it just looks like it's such a struggle. So what I want you to do is go get yourself a five gallon bucket. Now this five gallon bucket we're gonna to use to pour up our paint to roll out of. And while we're on the subject, you're gonna get a five gallon bucket, you're gonna get a five gallon paint screen. This goes in here like that. We're gonna get a nice sturdy, um, a really nice spin a little bit. You can spend like nine, 10 bucks and get a really nice roller frame. And then we're also gonna get a nine inch, three eighths roller pad. Now this is also a purdy. Uh, 3 8 9 inch roller pad, wool, works great, it goes on uh, the roller frame like that, and this is what we're going to use to roll out of. We're going to pour our paint up into this bucket, dip the roller, and this is what's going to be used to get the paint from the bucket to the roller to the wall. Awesome tool right here. Um, now I'm going to list all this stuff in the description. Uh, like, subscribe. Now that you guys know what to have, go get it. Come back because I'm going to show you how to use it and how to have a nice paint job. Like, subscribe. If you have any questions or need any other advice, email me, caleb at yourpaintcoach.com, caleb at yourpaintcoach.com. We'll see you guys later.